Hello everyone. Welcome to Speakers Bank podcast, CBS edition. Our voices and our views. I'm Tema and this is Chris. Hi. And we are students of JTI. Today we have our special guest, Mr. Richard Trotter, who will be discussing our topic, diabetes. But first, Richard, would you like to tell me about yourself first? Thank you, Tema and Chris, for introducing me. My name is Richard John Charles Trotter. I was born in Sydney in 1945 and uh, attended Canterbury Boys High School where I came Ducks and was a senior athlete. And then I went to university and studied a bit of law, which I didn't really like. <laughs> but anyway, time rolled on and I worked at the Attorney General's and local government department, industrial relations. And I liked the outdoors because I used to spend all my school holidays with my uncle who went to Geelong Grammar and Agricultural College. Yeah. And he managed all these big sheep and cattle stations. Mm -hmm. I used to go and stay with them. So I loved the outdoors. So I ended up doing surveying and worked all over the place, all over Australia, New Guinea, Fiji, New Zealand. But anyway, that's the uh, working side of it. There's a lot more stories to tell which I can't really tell you. <laughs> but anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. About the diabetes. Yes, yeah. So when did you start something's wrong? Was it? Oh, it's around about twenty eight. And I hadn't been working that much in the bush anymore. I had a break and worked in industrial relations in the government. And I found it was just a bit of a, you know party too much, you know, like drinking and two hour lunches and all this sort of business. And I started to put a lot of weight and get thirsty. And um, so I went to the GP and had a blood test and he said my sugar levels were a bit high. So from then on I had to observe that and be careful. And otherwise, you know, I probably wouldn't be here now. Right. Mm. Uh, so, uh, was that in the family, like uh, your father has diabetes? Too? Yeah, well, that's another factor they say to be aware of. If someone in the family has had it or has it, it can you know, be hereditary. Yeah. So my father did have diabetes and uh, that's how I was aware of it. There's another thing too called hemochromatosis. My uncle used to have high vitamin iron levels. Yep. And you're supposed to have blood bleeding every month or so after that. Oh. So there's things in families that you have to be aware of. Okay. So um, did you have to change your lifestyle, Richard? So yeah. that the, well, you, know, you do have to change yeah. it if you want results. Yeah. But I was a bit of a bad boy, you know, I'd <laughs> stick to it for a while and then I'd break out and carry on, you know. But you had diabetic counsellors, nurses who can help you with your diet and also those who will help you with your records, you know, like you have a little book and keep the records of your daily sugar level. Blood sugar level, yes. So before you were just doing exercises, you don't need the insulin? No, really, if you stick to the diet and exercise, you, you can get away with it, yes. Not get away with it in a bad way, but you don't need all this worry. Ah, yes, yes. So do you have to see your GP regularly? Well, I do. Oh. Well, you've got to go back anyway to get your repeats for your medication. Yeah. I'm taking metformin, diamicron, Nexium, Lipitor and things like that, because you've got to also watch your cholesterol levels. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise your heart can be affected. And I had a nuclear scan on my heart every five years. That's my idea, not the doctor. <laughs> and um, it's been pretty good. The doctor said, oh, I'll come back in five years, you know. Oh yeah, that's already good. Yeah. All right. I said, it's not bad for a guy who's been smoking 20 a day, you know. Oh. That's the trouble, see, I'm an idiot. Naughty boy! Yeah, so that's what happens. Oh, yeah. They say that, they, that you need to check your blood sugar level before you eat anything. 
Do you follow me? I normally do, yes yeah. I do. I check it in the morning, then after breakfast check again, then lunchtime, because if, if you don't check it, you don't know what it is obviously, and you can feel funny, yeah. like dizzy. Dizzy, yeah. And you wonder whether it can be either too high or too low and you can pass out. Yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah, very because easily. If you're at home by yourself, they all say to me, oh, you're all right, don't worry. But I get nervous and worried. Oh, yes, you would be. So and do you use any I... support service for diabetics? Well, I go to IPC Health for my um, podiatry, but whilst I'm there, some um, people come in like, to help. You know, like with the dietitian and all this sort of thing. Yeah. And um, no, but the government does provide a lot, which we should be grateful for. But we're, a lot of the things they're not aware of, you know. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. It's not Once well you get into the system, when you start finding out, and it's good. Like the other day, a girl came home from physio to the house and assessed me for a walker because I had a bad fall. Yeah. And now I'm a bit dizzy too. So now they put me on a waiting list in high care to get it for free, you know, and things like that. Mm. And today at one o'clock someone's coming home with a monitor, like um, an alarm thing. You can yeah. Press, uh, yeah, yeah. press and then they, you can get an emergency yeah, yeah. straight away. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so uh, when did you start to use insulin? You were accessing before, you didn't work Oh, about eight years ago. Ah, uh, okay. It's a pen, it's called Lantus Solar Star. And you can buy a box of 100. Well, you don't have to buy them, they're free for the diabetic service. Okay. Right. Get a box of 100, four millimeter needles, very fine there. And you screw them on, and then what the endocrinologist doctor tells you to do, I can like wind it up 26 units. And you put it in, in a circle you work around over the days mm. and uh, yeah it's pretty good oh. and it's not too rapid there's another one called rapid and I had that in the hospital once and I hypoed I was sweating and oh, I never yes. passed out but with this it's slow acting and it's for 24 hours Oh, yeah, oh. for the slow release, for yeah, the whole day. Release, okay, all right. Yeah. So, do you still exercise, or is that a bit Well, I'm finding it difficult now with this shoulder. I've lost my balance a bit, and, you know. Yeah, what's wrong with your shoulder? I fell over in a hole in Sydney. Oh. Yeah. And the humerus bone from the elbow to the shoulder was yeah. fractured in oh. a few places. Oh. And they oh. said, there's no guarantee that we operate. Yeah. So they didn't operate. And now I've just been struggling with this, you know. Well, yeah. I'm going to get up. It's hard, you know. It's a bit hard to stand up, yeah. Alright. So, what is your advice to keep diabetes in control for all the young listeners who are listening this morning? Well, it is a chronic condition, really, in the end. I mean, it can affect your eyesight. Yep. Your Brightness. kidneys. Liver, the whole thing can be affected. Yeah. And you can end up having amputations, go blind. Oh. So I mean only an idiot would not take the advice given. Yeah. Because now they're up to date with so many things. Yeah. And to give the insulin it's not a big deal. Oh. It's not like the old days where they have big needles and yeah. well, it's just a little fine thing. Yeah. And you've got to keep on board with it and don't miss it. Yeah. Uh, so, what sort of change did, do you have to do for your work or your social life after you find out you have diabetes? Well, it didn't really affect my work. Although when I was surveying in remote areas, I didn't really know I had diabetes, so anything could have happened. But, um, well, it was good, like when, uh, obeying what the doctor chose you to do. At the end of the day, if you do that, you can control it or, you know, keep it down and you don't have any um, side effects like which you can have. Yeah. 
which involve amputations, toe problems, foot problems, oh. eyesight, and... Um, Blindness. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And besides the... You've got a diabetic educators are very helpful too. Yeah. They give you good advice and help you monitor your sugar levels. Yeah. And also, um, there's diabetic counsellors. Oh. But there are a lot of things available. And the trouble is, it's not until something happens oh, yes. that you end then up in hospital. Then we can look out for it. Mm. Yeah, like yeah. I had a diabetic ulcer on my toe. And a small little thing like that ended up being in hospital for a month. Ah, uh, yeah. Then you oh. have to have the nurse come home for another month and you've got to go back and forth. It's a big issue. Yeah. And um, I remember the doctor said, oh, Richard, we can amputate your toe and you'll be out of the hospital in three days. Yeah, can't go Especially said, it's very hard to heal. I said, no, doctor. I said, patients have rights. That's right. So I ended up on antibiotics on a drip and fixed it. That's good. But once you get into a bit of a muzzle, it takes a bit to get out. That's it, mm. yep. Yeah, it's very hard to recover, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So uh, your father also had diabetes. Well, that's uh, right. That's why we were always aware of diabetes in the family. Yeah. And he could have lost his leg, but he had uh, skin graft oh. and cured it. But in those days, in the 1960s and 50s, they didn't have the blood testing and... All those equipment. Yeah, like we're not aware. Yeah. And, um, but now you've got everything, so you've got to take advantage of it. That's right, yeah. true. And for Richard, uh, do you have anything more to add to the discussion? Do you want to uh, talk about anything else? Well, I'd like to thank you people for making this opportunity to, you know, that people know about diabetes. I mean, we all hear it as a word, mm. but you don't yeah. really know the ramifications of it. Yep. Yes. And pointing out that you are a diabetic. See, people like when you, they first tell you you're a diabetic, you think it's like leprosy or some <laughs> yeah, disease. Yeah, pretty serious. That's so right, yeah, it is. You sort of get shocked. Yeah. And you don't want to tell anyone. No. But that's all down by the board now. People are aware of it. Yeah. And people are happy to help you, you know. And we got so many support services for diabetes. That's yeah. Right. All right, great. Thank you so much for letting us to have some time to talk with you. It was really good. Thank you very much. Now, if you have any stories, experience, or issues that matter to you, and would you like to join our podcast? You can contact us on www.speakersbank.org.au or or ring us on 9314-0988. Our views, our voices, Speakers Bank Podcast, Senior Edition. <laughs>